CAS is a well-known library for Scala that provides many useful abstractions that you can benefit from in your day-to-day -day work. Today, I'm going to look at uh, another pattern that, that we can follow with this library and how we can apply it to something practical. So the problem is that sometimes we have a list of either's. Let's say we'll have uh, strings and ints, very simple types. This is nothing unusual. We, we work with lists and either's uh, on a daily basis. It, that, it doesn't really matter what is inside them, uh, inside these either's, uh, just something. Uh, and sometimes we want to make this, uh, split this list into two lists. So we would like errors and successes as a list of strings and the list of ints. And uh, there are several ways to do this. Uh, if you know the Scala standard library pretty well, uh, you will know that there's a partition method on the list uh, type. This is without cats, just, uh, just partition like this. And we can say like, if it's a left, uh, then uh, this will end up in the first list. So we'll have L1, L2. Uh, we'll have two lists. So this already does the underlying logic for us, except it's not quite what we want because the types of this, uh, we still have the either's. We are guaranteed that the left side here, these are only lefts and this uh, these are only rights. So we could do something like L1 map uh, left get, uh, unless, you know, Th this method is deprecated in Scala 3, in Scala 213, uh, but we could do something like this, and this would give us a list of strings, but it's not very type safe and it's not very, you know, Scala like to do this kind of thing. We would like to have something that will, uh, do this for us in a type safe manner. So another alternative way to do this would be to do a fold. Uh, also you can see my, my most recent video, uh, where I show an, an alternative way to do folds. Uh, here we could actually apply the same pattern, but we are not going to. Uh, we are going to do just a fold left, uh, starting with two lists. Uh, so list empty string, then list empty int. Uh, we will have the, the lists. So we, let's say we'll have uh, the lefts, rights, and uh, the next value. And here, uh, you know, you could do some pattern matching here to, to check what the next value is and add it to the appropriate list, to the lefts or the rights. But in general, this is something you don't want to repeat every time you have to do this kind of logic. You don't want to do this every time you want to split a list. And what if we had something like, I really don't have name ideas today, let's call it T. This will be a list of tuples of strings and ints. And now what if you wanted to have, uh, like make this two lists? Uh, of course, we can traverse it twice. We can just map uh, to the head, to the first element, to the second element. This would work, uh, but obviously it traverses the list twice, so that's not optimal, and we'd rather do it just once. So that's just another example of something quite similar to this. We could solve these two problems with a fold uh, in pretty much the same way, except we'll be adding to both lists at once and not just one of them. Here we would add to one of them. So I'm not going to implement this. Instead, I'm going to show you uh, the generic solution, we can use the separate method from cats. Uh, so I'm going to import this. You can just import uh, cats syntax uh, alternative. I think that should do it. Yes, in, in the latest versions of cats, you don't need to import the instances. You just need the syntax. So this is the syntax. Uh, let's replace it with implicit just to get all the implicits just in case we need them. Uh, so this does exactly this fold, except this still traverses the list twice because uh, it works with uh, list as a monad. Uh, it doesn't have sufficient information about the list type to know that it can actually do this in a single traversal. But uh, recently has, there has been an addition to cats. There's a separate foldable, uh, which does the same thing, except it's optimized for types that have a foldable instance and list does. So we are going to use that. And now we only traverse once, so just like in a single full left, except we don't need to write this logic ourselves. And we have these two lists. So if we have something like error one as left, this is just you know, left error one. Um, then we have a two as right, error three as left. Uh, if we had something like this, uh, we would have uh, a list with two elements here, a list with one element here. We can actually print this to see. Uh, let's run it. 
So yeah, we have we have two errors here and one one uh, int on the on the right side. So this works. And now if I had the list of tuples, let's change this so it's uh, actually I, I can use just tuple two by the way. And not everyone knows this. This syntax is syntactic sugar for the tuple two type. Uh, so I could have used that instead and uh, have less trouble uh, making the change. But whatever. Uh, so now obviously I need to change the values here. We're going to have uh, e1 and 1 maybe, just a couple of these, some different numbers. And this still compiles, this still uh, is going to work. So we are going to get two equal length lists, one with the left sides and one with the right sides. And uh, that's what we get. So this works because uh, both uh, the tuple type, uh, tuple 2, and either implement the bifoldable type class. So they have an instance of this type class, uh, which is used inside the implementation of separate foldable. Uh, I recommend you check it out. It's basically just that a fold left on the sequence. So on the list in this case, uh, starting with two empty lists. So exactly what we did in the beginning. And then we have a bifold left, an operation from the bifoldable type class. Uh, so anyway, this is just one of the things that the alternative type class gives us. Um, let's look at it real quick. So alternative is like uh, monoid K and applicative. And what these mean, uh, I'm not going to do, go too deep into the details, but uh, what we can do with, with alternative, let's say we have a very generic function working on just alternative. We won't know whether it's a list or something else. Uh, and we are going to return an f of int. So we can say, we are going to have an, a 42, and then we are going to have um, a 10. And if we say that f is a list, actually, let's see what happens. Uh, we will get a list with these two elements, so 42 and then 10. However, and that's the second one thing here. So let's disable this. Uh, however, if we say it's an option, we will get, um, I think, 42. No, wait, this didn't, didn't recompile, I think. Let's try it again. There we go, so we got 42. And this is because the alternative uh, implementation for option uh, in, in the implementation, this is the or else operator. Uh, so you have to know basically what the implementation of, an, of a type class for a given type, what it looks like, how it works. Um, to, to use these type classes. But in general, this is a good pattern for building sequences um, in a generic fashion. And separate uh, will use this under the hood. So also, because option has this instance, we could have used option here and some with just one of these values and print this, uh, we would get uh, a sum with this. So this is a very simple case. Actually, in, the, in this case, I don't think this operator is going to be used at all because we just have one value. But in general, it we could work with this. Uh, so this operator is not from alternative. It comes from uh, semi-group K, uh, which is one of the parents of the alternative type class. And let's change this back to list. So alternative is both an applicative and a monoid K. And monoid K would give us just the ability to like, combine these two things with this, uh, this operator. Uh, this comes from semi-group K. Then we have in monoid K the empty operation. So we could re return uh, an empty structure. We can actually do this here, like alternative uh, empty. So this is basically a null operation. Like the result of this and also concatenating, concatenating with an empty value would be uh, the same as the, the as the left side, uh, but what we also get uh, just beyond one eight k is all the applicative operators. So we have pure, we have up and map and everything else, and uh, and that's basically it. Now why don't we just use applicative and one eight k? We could, except now there's no connection between these two type classes, uh, so we have no way to. I mean, you know, if I change these these names of the type class here, uh, it would work. Uh, but now we can no longer trust that these two two instances work well together. Uh, they are just there's no connection between them and no loss that would govern that. But if we use alternative, we're guaranteed that the the implementation 
uh, the operations from applicative in that instance, like pure uh, and map, they work well with operations from the monoid K instance. So we can do basically this kind of thing. This will work with any kind of sequence that has alternative. Usually this would be vector, uh, list, uh, chain, uh, option. Option behaves a little differently because of this operator, but uh, you just have to know that. Uh, in any case, uh, it's quite a useful tool. Uh, it's also used for combining two different things that can be you know, alternatives of each other. That's where the name comes from. For example, you could combine parsers or decoders. Uh, there, there are many things that would work like this, but that's that's a topic for a different video. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this this quick walkthrough of what alternative gives us and uh, how you can solve this problem with separating uh, lists of iders and and tuples. I hope you uh, have a use case for this and uh, and you can reduce some of your boilerplate. So if you enjoyed the video, you know what to do: subscribe, uh, stop like. And I'll see you in the next episode.